Don't spoil me, this is a blind run. Quite frankly, I don't care how the game ends. <laughs> Do they usually have fried squid? Do they usually have fried squid? Fried squid. Fried squid, girls. Fried squid. What? Squid. Squid. That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Are you saying you don't like squid? I'm beginning to feel threatened here. <laughs> you can go talk to everyone else. Okay, yeah, sure they'll do that. Apparently I worry about too much about Sayori. I'm fine, see? Sayori shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright, if you say so. <sighs> when does this game get good? Sayori is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there is something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Madge. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really like this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. I just want to ask if you know anything, so I'll drop it now. It's important to me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know. Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with the person of interest. What? Person of interest? Oh my god, am I about to be murdered? I'm gonna be murdered! What do you mean by that? Am I on the hit list? You're so funny, Machu is a boy. Please ignore my squid legs. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you. Ah, I said too much. That's alright, just pop your hips back in where they belong, darling, and everything's forgotten. I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Alright. I know she's said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. I watch her kneel down to Sayori and gently talk to her, but she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. Stop eavesdropping, you jerk! I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh down so much? What? Is this not how you're meant to feel about your friends? I don't know. I don't know things about friends, so maybe not. Sayori and I have just been friends for a long time, that's all. Indeed. Why can't you just be friends around here? Now perhaps it's unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Or maybe I'm just reading into it a little much. I think that Sayori is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what may be going on inside her head. And she may not always know what she wants. Sometimes a person's mysteries are untold even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware were in you. That is, I think that... I think... What? Blah 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 blah. Yuri, you're giving me too much credit. I don't know what's going on here. I'm a pretty simple guy, apparently. I'm not a guy, I'm a lady. <laughs> I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you. That's not a compliment, is it? No, it isn't. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Yes! Thank God! Reading! <sighs> right, poetry mode, poetry mode. Slider, slider. I am 
I'm starting to lose my voice a bit. All this talking. This is the most talking I've done for weeks. Beach. A marvel millions of years in the making, where the womb of Earth chaotically meets the surface. Under a clean blue sky, an expanse of bliss, and but beneath great rolling clouds and endless enigma. The easiest wood to get world to get lost in is where everything can be found. Yuri, you need to work on your handwriting. I can barely read anything. One can only build a sand castle where the sand is wet. For where the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently lick at your foundations until you give in? Or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same. Yet still, we build sand castles. I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles, where my toes squish into the sand. The salty air is therapeutic. The breeze is gentle yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempted by the foamy tendrils. Turn back and abandon my peace to erode at the shore. Drift forward and I return to earth forevermore. Now, I, I much preferred the raccoon stabby blood poem. You say that like you didn't even want to write about it. After yesterday, Natsuki and I, well, it was amusing that we wrote about something similar in such different ways. So Natsuki wanted us to write about the same topic as each other again. I suppose to better compare the differences in our writing styles or thought processes. Anyway, it was her idea. I'll be your beach. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminish your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place, a beach for us to go. A shore reaching beyond your sight, a sea that sparkles with brilliant light. The walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you de daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought had left you long ago. Let's bury our heavy thoughts in a pile of sand, bathe in sunbeams and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea and let me see you shine. Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail, set you free in my windy sail. And remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought had left you long ago. But if you let me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. I preferred yesterday's. Kind of hard to write anything negative about the beach. Well, it smells a bit. Yuri's take on it was a little more solemn. Well, that's to be expected. <laughs> After all, she was the one who wanted us to write about the same topic. Making us write about a simple topic than trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy. You're making new friends just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? Well, not really, no. The music's driving me crazy. <coughs> Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom humming to herself. What about your poem? I didn't get a poem! The lady who knows everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth, the lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather, lost adrift in the sky, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search, I search a little hope, knowing legends don't exist. For when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains, the last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky. Until one day the wind ceases to blow, I fall, and I fall and fall and fall even more, gentle as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and I find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose. And we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat. And I pick up a gust of wind. Now I like that one. That was actually quite good. 
I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sorts of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. It was good. I liked it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical, because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> Are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. You mean one-dimensional? Ah, yeah, that, anyway. Okay, you three, we're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out? Hold on a second. Is it just me, or did you say something strange just now? Something did sound a bit unusual. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. Well, I wasn't paying any attention. I don't have a catchphrase. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, thank you for that, Yuri. The only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Oh, it seems you're right. <laughs> Siori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to, anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on. She wasn't feeling too well and went home early. I hope she's alright. Of all the times not to go home with you, you pick the time she's not feeling well. So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. That curious expression coming from Yuri of all people. What? What? What's going on here? Uh, I haven't spent that much time in Monica. Her hips are very off-putting, as her are her radioactive green eyes. Oh dear, so much demand for Yuri. Oh, fine. Oh no, am I going to have to see Yuri's raccoon closet? I chose you because I got totally pressured into it, and also my comment section is on the verge of rioting again. Good. I approve of this decision. This is the first time I think I've approved of a decision that my protagonist has made here. <laughs> Sayori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? It has been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Siori's room is as messy as it's always been. I always recognise the same stuff, animals and wall decorations stuff she's had for years now. If you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. Clean your own damn room, woman. <laughs> Clean your own room! <laughs> You're really just going to make me say it, aren't you? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had a really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Sayori kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? 
Did she really want so badly for me just to not think about her? Why is it that you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much that I could do. I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Madge, who was a boy. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes. But it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Oh, I was kind of hoping to see her dead raccoon closet, actually. Mood lighting, aromatherapy candles. Boring. Yuri rummages through a bag. She pulls out four candles and a wooden cylinder-shaped object. I agree, Zesty. I feel really let down by lack of raccoons right now. Now we're doing origami. Boring. 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 Ah, it's so dull. The knife is strangely beautiful. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. The silver handle has an intricate pattern of waves etched into it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. What the fuck is wrong with this girl? It's an interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you and your raccoon. It's kind of intense. Besides, it's a really cool looking knife. I can't deny that. Would you like to hold it? It feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? Many questions for you, Yuri. Many questions. Curious of its sharpness, I feel the point of the knife with my index finger. Ow. Yep, you idiot. Why did you do that, you idiot? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. I should have warned you, this knife is extremely sharp. It can cut through skin like it's paper. A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my stupid finger. <laughs> Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Oh, great. There's, now she's going to drink my blood or something. She stares at it and notably fidgets. And if you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Ew! She's an actual vampire! Without warning, Yuri puts her finger in my, her mouth and licks the wound, you vampire! Get off me. Startled, I instinctively pull my hand back and reach for the crucifix. That's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. I expect it probably is. Yeah. Statement probably quite true. How could I do something like that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sure, it was a little weird and it took me by surprise. It was totally weird. Now I have a germs. I have Yuri germs. Yuri vampire germs. Yuri vampire raccoon germs. She's been licking undead raccoons or something. What? Yuck! No! Yuri just looks at me like I did something wrong. Yes, you did! We're exchanging Germans! Germs! And Germans, possibly. I don't know. Are there Germans hanging on the stream? Daco! Daco, you there? Hello. <laughs> the banner. Uh... That's why I asked you to buy the paint tablets. Watercolour paint tablets. That's a terrible choice for a banner, speaking as an artist. If you're going to make a banner, you want acrylics. Watercolours are not for this sort of work. Well, we've just bumped noggins. So we've already exchanged Germans, germs, and dead raccoons, so... There are droplets of paint on Yuri's face and neck. Probably also vampire bite marks. I'd check her for that while you're at it. 
Ew, is that what she looks like? Ew. Like, her chin is going to, like, stab someone. The purple uh, hair, I can maybe understand. She has black hair and she dyed it purple, which looks kind of cool. And the eyes, I cannot explain. They look terrible. Her nose is non-existent and it's going to stab me in the eye by the looks of this. But it's the chin that really gets me. That chin's gonna give get some, someone's eye out. Look at how sharp it is. That's horrible. Oh dear, what's going on here? Yuri's gentle fingers wrapped around my wrist sent a tingling sensation from my arm. Yuck. Yuck. No, I don't know! She's gonna stab me! Even a chin is a knife! Even a goddamn chin is a knife! Get away from me! Is that over? Please let that be over. No, really, I want her to leave with her knife and her knife chin and her vampire bites and her undead raccoon germs. Yuri takes a step closer to me then briefly squeezes my hand. Oh no! Too close. Too close. Personal space, Yuri. Thank you! Oh, Sayori, good. Just the person I wanted to see. Thank you. Oh, and the music stopped. Yes! Little celebration. Woo! Exit stage left. Vroom! <laughs> I'm glad Sayori's here. Save me from the mad vampire lady. What? I like you so much that I want to die? What? Oh, cal calm down, woman. Let's back up a bit here. Um. Okay. Also, the comments have gone mad again. <laughs> I'm going to ignore this sentimental music and just saying that... Admiring the insanity going on in my comments section of the, my Twitch right now. Well, I don't actually really like either of them, but... Um, that sharp chin is kind of disturbing me. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Ugh, yuck. Let's just call this whole thing off. You know what? This is an excellent moment to go have a holiday in Lapland. <coughs> and I'm losing my voice, so I'm not having can't talk as much as I was. Are you saying that this is making you feel sad, Sayori? Like, and Jesus, I can't do anything right here. <laughs> Ugh. I am going to stop there. That, uh, for one thing, I'm going to lose my voice if I continue. <laughs> well, that was weird. We had um, undead raccoon germs and yeah, that was terrible. No, no, really, I'm going to lose my voice. I can't talk anymore. <laughs>